All right, another installment of Project YFZ 2006 Special Edition. Uh, finally got my cylinder head in, and I'm setting up the rings on the piston right now. I will be going over the cylinder head shortly, but I'm just going to go over the specs on what I did here. I have my tool installed in here, and what this does is this squares up the rings, so when you set them down, they are nice and square in the cylinder. Uh, I checked my top provided by uh, Weissico, or I'm sorry, Wasner. Uh, top ring came in about 12,000, second ring, 18 to 19. It's got a little bit of a taper to it. The scrapers, the thin oil scrapers, are kind of hard to measure because they're very, very loose in the cylinder. There's not a lot of uh, spring there, so they're just a scraper, very, very low tension. I'm actually, this is probably what disappointed me the most was the fact that these, you actually had to manually get your fingers in there to expand it to, to check the gap because it, it would so limp. So it does rely on this spring right here to kind of locate it. But uh, anyway, just a small observation. It won't cause any problems. Uh, I just, I've done so many pistons and cylinders that I just have seen a lot of different things. Um, I'm measuring them with these set of feeler gauges I have here. I got these a long time ago off of a Mac tool truck. Um, if you look up 14 blade valve lash gauge set, you can find these. They're very affordable. I like them because they're single little filler gauges, and when you have the little flip out one, they tend to move around a lot. And they're fine too, but I like to have the individual ones. It's just kind of, it's a preference thing, you know, no big deal. Anyway, uh, Factory YFZ ring gaps are going to come in from around 8 to 12 on the top. And I want to say 14 to 16 on the second. Um, and I don't remember on the third. Anyway, um, you tend to increase these a little bit when you're doing aftermarket performance pistons. And they got a little guide to give you, usually with the, the piston and ring set, telling you, you know, multiply your bore diameter times four and a half thousandths per inch of bore diameter, things like that. So you would say, I got a 3.5 inch bore, 3.5 times four and a half thousandths, and I get 17, whatever it might be. So you tend to get uh, a little bit bigger of a recommendation because usually when you're running these things in race conditions, the rings themselves will get very hot and thermally they'll start closing the gap. So you want to have a little bit bigger of a gap. Bigger of a gap, unfortunately, you get more blow by. So the stock ones tend to run on the tight side. I'm actually going to stick with what came in place out of the package here. 12 is on the loose end of stock specs and the tight end of an aftermarket recommendation. I'm going to keep it there. This will wear out, um, you know, the, wing, the rings, if you take this out, after running X amount of hours, 50, 100, whatever it might be, dirty conditions always make it worse, dusty, or filter maintenance, this ring gap is going to increase. You're going to get more blow by. You're going to get a little more cylinder pressure. Maybe you'll get some oil build up inside your oil separator in your air box. You don't know. There's a lot of different things that could happen. But basically, your engine will start to get tired. So I'm going to keep it in the stock small side of things because this is not an extreme build. Again, this is stock compression. Stock bore, um, the head is got a little bit of work done to it, but not much. Stock camshafts are running, stock valve springs, stock header pipe, and just a slip-on. So again, this is not an extreme build. Um, intake side is going to have be a little bit opened up, but this is this is a reliability. This is more of an endurance build for me. Um, this will be able to run pump gas all day. You know, I don't want to have to rebuild this thing real quickly. So again, everything I'm shooting for towards here is more towards like the factory side of things. So I'm going to keep the rings a little bit on the smaller side as far as gaps. These are pretty much in line with what I need, so i got no problems there. I will move on to the cylinder head. Cylinder head I sent out to Pro One Racing Heads in Tempe, Arizona. And I had him do what they call the Level 2 cylinder head work, which is uh, I get valve guides, valve seats, porting done, and the cylinder surface, deck surface here, cut and vapor blasted, cleaned up very nicely. Um, I sent them this head completely stripped of all plugs, 
studs, everything, you name it. Just the valve springs and valves installed in it. And uh, I bought brand new titanium factory valves, bone stock valves from the Rocky Mountain ATV to the tune of about $384 shipped. So these are not cheap for brand new valves. This is a very low hour cylinder head, low hour motor altogether. And I probably had no need to do this. The old ones are actually in pretty good shape. They're right here. Um, so anyway, the one thing I noticed when I first looked at this cylinder head is the, the texture of the port work. He, he massaged over the chamber very lightly. Didn't do a whole lot to the chamber. I don't think the volume has gone down very much. Um, but the tool marks are very evident. It's a little bit of a rough surface. Not bad, but you can see, just see a lot of kind of tool chatter marks. Um, one neat thing about this head service is, where's the valve I took out? Right there. These are Mold Star valve seats, and guides are bronze guides. I don't think they're the same material. I don't know exactly what the valve guides are, some type of bronze. But this is a Mold Star 90 seat. This is a really, really nice copper or copper based material that basically will help keep the valve cool every time the valve hits the seat it needs to transfer heat from the valve to the seat and this material is a lot better than the stock steel valve seat so especially for the exhaust the exhaust needs to really transfer that heat so your exhaust valve opens and you have all that hot burnt gas going out across the valve here it's going to get really hot when it hits that seat that seat will be able to take heat out of the valve that's what's important about keeping the valve lash. You want to let that valve cool off. The port work looks okay. Looks like he had a nice focus on the bowl areas and the long turn here. Uh, it doesn't look like... Uh, yeah, I mean, it looks pretty good. I can't really see anything bad about it. It doesn't look like anything extreme on the intake side. Hard to see in there, but... Uh, Again, it looks like some nice cleanup work. Some nice city contours. He did good in the bowl areas. On his cylinder heads, the closer you are to the valves, the more the port work is, uh, is important. So basically, starting from the valve seat and nearby there, the valve seat and just up into the throat area, that's where your most gains tend to come from. The farther you go out to the port, the less the work is important what you're doing. I mean, opening up this diameter right here and working a little bit in this entry, it doesn't do a whole lot. Um, it's all in the bowl area and, and the turns right to the short and the long turn. They call it short being closer to the valve, long being closer to the top. So again, nice work overall. I was happy with it. It's clean. I had him cut the minimum amount of material off here just to flatten this up. Overall, with the work, I'm pretty happy. It took I uh, forget, three, three or so weeks to complete. Um, I wasn't really in a big rush because this is a very slow build. So uh, very happy with it. Again, this is an endurance setup. I'm using stock valve springs. Uh, nothing really too fancy here. So this is going to be a nice endurance build. A little bit of port work. It's nothing extreme. But uh, it'll this will be a nice high RPM runner. So that's my update for now. Uh, I got the old piston over here. I was just checking some of the measurements of where that fell in place. Uh, I got my hot cams uh, shim kit for sh shimming the buckets up. After I put the spring and the retainers back in, I will mount the cams and cam caps and I will check all the lash. And I have the shims I need here from hot cams. Pretty affordable kit. Although it is, uh, it's made in China, and I hope that the material they use here for the price you pay for these things to get these a whole boatload of those shims. I hope it's the right hardness material. I hope it doesn't indent or anything, but this is a pretty much industry standard. Everybody uses these. So, not too worried, but I tend to like to use the OEM parts when I can. I'm sure the OEM material here will never, um, you know, get any dimples or anything in it. I'm sure it's very hard and exactly what it needs to be survived. So again, I'm all about reliability with this build. Thanks for watching.